I'm Sammy Bodge from Credit Suisse. I focus on tech telecommunications infrastructure and communications equipment, covering both sectors. Today I'll be talking about 5G. When we think about the effect of 5G on data centers, think about it as two or three phases. The first phase is actually as every network operator densifies their infrastructure. They're connecting small cells to macro cell towers and all of those are wrapped up together with fiber into a data center. Phase two is densification of the data center, having the right equipment, the right core routers, the right core switches, making sure things are actually functioning correctly. The third phase is optimization, using network function virtualization or software-defined networking. In today's presentation, I'll be addressing how some of these effects are impacting the biggest data center operators in the world. So today, up to this point, 5G definitely has standards laid out. Uh, I would say that Nokia and Ericsson have done a very good job addressing what exactly we are trying to tackle by rolling out a 5G standard, but it is still very out of reach from consumer consumption in my, in my view. This is going to be a more 2020 or 2021 dynamic where you start seeing users really interact with 5G based applications. <laughs> So it's going to take probably about another couple of years before we really see something tangible. But in the meantime, a lot of telecoms and network operators have to build up the infrastructure to make sure that 5G is ready when it's ready to be consumed by consumers. So it's essentially a race from today all the way until 2020 to make sure that your network is ready to withstand that much volume of traffic and that kind of interoperability in your network. I would say that, interesting enough, it is an edge play, but in a more indirect way than people think. Part of what 5G wants to do, or 5G is going to alleviate, is densifying dense metros to make sure that the majority of users on that network have access to very high speed and high bandwidth connectivity. So if you think about more densification happening in every single metro in the form of Wi-Fi boxes, small cells, radio access network appliances, and, and macro cell towers, you, by default of densifying the network, are addressing multiple more users on the edge level. And this, in turn, allows more edge applications to function more smoothly. So today, if you think about a lot of the cases with autonomous vehicles, part of the reason why applications may not necessarily work as well as people want them to is because the edge is not established. The application to application interface is not running so smoothly. But I would say as a byproduct of 5G being densified and deployed, you will see a lot of cohesive connectivity and therefore an edge play. Timeline for 5G will be definitely a lot longer than people expect. There is definitely a peak in hype cycle right now in terms of discussion and deployment. I would say network operators or telecom operators such as Verizon, AT&T, uh, and you can think of all your, your other European operators are considering where they want to tackle or where they want to deploy today because there's no way they could actually spend that much capital expenditures to address all the deployment options. So you're going to see a very slow ramp from today all the way until about 2020. Then from 2020 to about 2025, you're going to see 5G phones go mainstream. I, would, I believe that that is probably the window of time where you're going to see really 5G be prevalent in the consumer world. But from now until about 2020, I would be surprised to see any real consumer uh, momentum happening on the 5G side. And network operators will slightly scale into it now and then ramp up over the next couple of years into 2020 and then ready for consumer use. Yeah, DCD is, is very big. It's probably one of the bigger conferences I've attended, and uh, the location is very good. So it's attracting probably the majority of the business professionals in the area, and it's very convenient. A lot of technology investors or technology professionals have very little excuses not to come. So uh, going well so far. Uh, I do want to meet several new business professionals. I do want to also attend some of the panels to learn some other things that are not necessarily so obvious from an analytical perspective on the surface, right? So my job requires me to be in, embedded in models and uh, taking a lot of executives for what they say on the surface from a lot of the corporates I cover. But coming to these events, you hear some very granular explanations of things that you never re realized uh, existed in the, in the industry. And that's, that's essentially why I'm excited for today's uh, conference.